What's going on guys? This is your boy The Boxing Lowdown and I'm back here with another video. Now as always people don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment if you like and I'll happily get back to you. Now let's talk about the middleweight division. One of the most frustrating divisions uh, I can recall in recent memory man. Now going back you guys know your history. Uh, the middleweight division alongside heavyweight, alongside lightweight, alongside you know welterweight. One of the glamour divisions in boxing always has been. If you can become a star at middleweight, you're likely to become a household name as that because, you know, middleweight, like I said, one of the glamour divisions in boxing. You have a look in recent name, in recent history, some of the people that have become, you know, middleweight champions and legends. You've got the likes of Bernard Hopkins, uh, Marvin Hagler, Carlos Monzon, uh, Triple G in most recent memory. Now, right now, I want to know who is the guy to take over at middleweight because we do currently still have Triple G as you know the number one ranked middleweight he is the world champion uh let's pull up these rankings so you guys can see who i'm talking about here this is from the ring magazine um triple g is still at number one uh he's still the champion even though he lost to canelo last time out he does still hold the majority of the belts at middleweight so i guess you'd say he is the man at middleweight right now but when you look at it man uh he's 40 41 years old he's on the way out there's no secret about that he's currently out of his prime he's been out of his prime for a little bit now um, he is vulnerable, in my opinion, um, in terms of how long he's got left, uh, how long can he hold on to that top spot? Because for me, uh, it's there for the taking. And at the moment, I'm not really seeing anyone, any standout contender that is about to take over and move this division forward. And it's been very frustrating, this division, over the last couple of years, the fact that none of these guys have really got it on with each other. Uh, Triple G and Murata did fight eventually. Um, they did fight, when was it, in December last year or was it early this year? Uh, they did have a fight, Triple G unified the belts, looked very vulnerable there, man. You could tell he's showing his age. I mean, he is 41 years old, 40 years old. He's not superhuman, do you know what I mean? So you are likely to slow down at that age and he has been, you know, in the game for a long time now. Who is the guy to take this forward, man? Uh, is it Jamal, Char Jamal Charlo? Sorry. Um, looking at Jamal Charlo, man, this guy has the talent, he's got the ability, um, you know, I thought that he was going to be someone that would really, you know, stamp his authority in this division. Um, like I said, very talented, him and his brother. His brother has since gone on to, you know, become undisputed at the weight below, junior middleweight. Jamal Charlo at middleweight looked like he could, you know, really make some noise. But I don't know when his next fight is. I don't know what his situation is. Um, what is going on with Jamal Charlo right now? I know there were some issues outside of the ring, but... Yeah, what is the situation with him? When is his next fight? Why hasn't he fought any of these top guys? What What is going on? Uh, Jaime Munguia, another guy, undefeated. We're waiting for him to make that step up in competition. We still haven't seen it. He's going up against a guy, um, no disrespect to him, but a guy who's not expected to push him, you know, to the limits where he should be at right now if we're really supposed to take him seriously as a, you know, contender slash champion in the division. Uh, we're not seeing it. And um, he's very frustrating, Munguia, man. Another fight that nobody really cares about. Um, you're padding your record again. Like, where are we really going here in terms of Jaime Munguia and his reign at middleweight? Uh, look at some of the other guys in here. Yanni Beck, let's talk about him. In action over the weekend. Uh, fought Denzel Bentley. Shout out to Denzel Bentley. Um, everybody expected it to be a blowout. Uh, Yanni Beck has, you know, he did come into the ring with a bit of a feared reputation. He was, we all know, he was ducked by Demetrius Andrade. Um, he didn't want no smoke with him. And then Yanni Beck got elevated to uh, world champion at WBO. Um, so Demetrius Andrade, he's another one. What's going on with him? Is he super middleweight? Is he a middleweight? What is he? Anyway, Yanni Beck uh, going into this fight was expected to blow out Denzel Bentley. Uh, came into the ring with a feared reputation. Had a great amateur career. Um, won gold medals. Uh, not in the Olympics, but um, in the World National Championships, I believe. He was a gold medalist there. He's a very talented amateur. And you could see it in the ring. Do you know what I mean? He is very talented. He's a very good front foot counter puncher. Um, he does have skills in his repertoire. You know, he is very talented. Got Buddy McGirt in the corner there. One of my favorite trainers right now. But I didn't see a monster. I didn't see the guy that they're marketing him to be. This sort of feared boogeyman of the division. Now, what he will say is, is that he's been asking for the smoke. He hasn't been getting it. Demetrius Andrade blatantly ducked him. So he'll call himself the boogeyman. And I guess, 
you know, there is a bit of merit to that. But on evidence in the ring on Saturday night, you know, he was the clear winner in terms of winning. I probably had him about eight rounds to four. But I didn't see no monster in there, man. I have to be honest. I didn't see no boogeyman. I didn't see a monster. I saw someone that can be got at. Do you know, after the first five or six rounds, he looked very good. Um, then he started to fade a little bit. You know, Denzel Bentley started to grow in confidence. He started to push him back. Uh, started to land some shots of his own. Um, even Buddy McGirt was screaming at him in the corner, telling him to continue to push his opponent back, let his hands go. I didn't see it for some of the middle rounds there, man. And maybe it's because it's his first time he went the distance. But, you know, a lot of people were expecting him to blow out Denzel Bentley. And maybe unfairly so, due to the fact that Bentley did get blown out by Felix Cash over three rounds. Maybe he thought he was going to do the same thing. I didn't see it. Bentley held his own in there and I really only saw him in real serious trouble in the 12th round. Other than that, um, he was holding his own in there for me, for most of the fight anyway. So listen, Yanni Beck, you know, he's in a good position right now to really be, you know, primed to, you know, take this division forward, I guess. But, you know, I don't see someone that's, you know, I, he, he, he's not striking that fear, that reign of terror that Triple G had seven, eight years ago when he was knocking everybody out. And maybe I'm putting this to one performance that wasn't his best. Uh, maybe it could be that. Maybe this is a good thing for Yanni Beck because maybe people are now looking at him and saying, yeah, I won't mind a piece of that. We saw Felix Cash on the internet, on, on Twitter, was it today or yesterday, come out and say, look, he wants to smoke. Called out Yanni Beck, said to Eddie Hearn, added him publicly, said, Eddie Hearn, put me in these fights. Let me show you what I can do at middleweight. And you know what? Why not? Felix Cash is talented. Um, you know, he, he blew out Denzel Bentley, but we haven't seen him in those fights at middleweight either yet. You know, the ones that he wants. Um, he has had some issues outside of the ring, but let's see what he can do at middleweight. You know, um, Chris Eubank Jr., what's he doing right now? It's looking like he's going to be fighting Liam Smith uh, next year. That's a good fight. I'm not mad at that fight at all. I actually like that fight. Uh, but Liam Smith is a natural junior middleweight. He's not a middleweight contender. So um, does Chris Eubank Jr. still want to be that guy to become undisputed at middleweight? I'm not really seeing it based on his recent evidence. Uh, he was going to fight Conor Ben before this Liam Smith fight. We all know how that turned out. Obviously, the fight didn't happen. Now he's going to fight Liam Smith. At this stage of Chris Eubank's career, he's, what, 32, 33? Um, is he more interested in the money right now rather than becoming undisputed at middleweight? Maybe. But I'm not really seeing a standout middleweight person at the moment who, I'm, who I can confidently say, yeah, he is the guy that's going to take it forward. Uh, Yanni Beck could be the guy, but, you know, Felix Cash wants him. Um, who else is there? So this division, like I said, very frustrating. Um, over the last couple of years, it's just been, we haven't seen the best fight the best. And it's a shame because, you know, they're all like sharks just circling around each other, but no one's really going at each other. Like I said, in this top 10 here, really, Triple G's fought Devryanchenko and he's fought Murata. Other than that, I mean, we're scarce in terms of like getting these guys to fight each other. So yeah, very disappointing. It's been one of the more frustrating divisions over the last few years. Hopefully we can now see some sort of activity, man. Get these guys to fight each other. And, you know, let's see who is going to be the guy at 160. Because like I said, right now, it's wide open. Triple G holds the belts right now. But like I said, he's on the way out. Who's going to be the next guy? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this, man. Will it be Yanni Beck? Very talented, like I said. He could be that guy. But as of right now, man, it's wide open for me. And uh, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments as to who you think it will be. Let me know your thoughts, man. I'll happily reply to them. Um, drop your suggestions in the comment section below. Will this division finally pick up some steam, man? It needs to. Let me know, guys. I'll catch you on the next video.